back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at practicing using the four quantum numbers. So identifying quantum numbers, writing electronic configuration and drawing orbital box notation. Let's have a little look at the four quantum numbers first. The first quantum number is the principal quantum number and represents the electron shell. This is given the symbol n and has integer values of 1, 2, 3 and 4. The second quantum number is the subshell or orbital and is given the symbol L. This can go from 0 to n minus 1. Where it is 0, this is an s orbital. When it is 1, this is a p orbital. 2 for a d orbital and 3 for an f orbital. The third quantum number is the orientation or direction in space. This is given the symbol m subscript l and goes from negative L to positive L. For S, we have a value of zero. For P, we have minus one, zero, and plus one. And for D, we have minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. The fourth quantum number is the spin quantum number and is given the symbol M subscript S and takes values of plus a half and minus a half. There are three rules that we need to think about when we're writing either electronic configuration or orbital box notation. The first rule is the Aufbau rule. This states that electrons will fill orbitals in order of increasing energy. They will do this in a specific order. They fill the 1s first, followed by the 2s and then the 2p, the 3s and then the 3p, the 4s and then the 3d. The second rule is the Pauli exclusion principle. This states that orbitals can hold no more than two electrons and where there are two electrons they must have opposite spin. This means they cannot have the same spin. They need to pair up with opposite spins. This is because when they are in the same orbital they already have three of the same quantum numbers their fourth quantum number must be different. The final rule to consider is Hund's rule. This is where we have degenerate orbitals such as the 2p, the 3p and the 3d. Where they're available they must fill singly with parallel spins before pairing. If we were to look at a p orbital we have three degenerate p orbitals. If we were to try and put in four electrons we have the option of putting them in and pairing them up or we put them in singly first and then pair. We're always attempting to maximise how many single electrons there are. This means that we will fill singly with spins parallel before pairing. We're going to look at electron configuration. The first thing that we need to do is to look up the data book for the basic electron configuration. For chlorine, you will find that this is 2, 8, 7. This means that in the n equals 1 shell we have 2 electrons, in the n equals 2 shell we have 8 electrons and in the n equals 3 shell we have 7 electrons. We're now going to break this down further to show how many electrons are within each orbital. In the n equals 1 shell we only have an s orbital and it holds 2 electrons. In the n equals 2 shell we first of all have two two, a 2s orbital which can hold 2 electrons. We've still got 6 electrons. We move then to the 2p which can hold 6 electrons. In total we have the full 8 that we have in the second shell. In the n equals 3 shell we start with the 3s which has 2 electrons. We've got 7 in total so we have 5 left to fill. These go into the 3p or orbital so we get 3p5. Use page 8 of your databook to write electronic configuration for the following five species. Potassium has a basic electron arrangement of 2, 8, 8, 1. When we're writing electronic configuration we start off from the first shell and we have 1s2. We go into the second shell and we've got 2s2 and 2p6 to add up to 8. 
we've then got 3s2 and 3p6 to add up to 8 and the final electron is in the 4s1. Carbon has an electron configuration of 2, 4. This means we have 1s2, 2s2 and the final two electrons go into the p orbital. Sulfur's electron configuration is 2, 8, 6. This means we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 to add up to 8, 3s2, and 3p4 to add up to 6. Vanadium has an electron configuration of 2, 8, 11, 2. In the first shell we have 1s2, followed by the second shell 2s2, 2p6. We then have 3s2, 3p6. That takes up 8 electrons. We have 11 in total, so we'll have 3d3 and 4s2. You can write these two either way around at the end. Nitrogen has an electron arrangement of 2,5. However, when it forms an ion, it gains three electrons, so it becomes 2,8. This means that its electron arrangement will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let's look now at drawing orbital box notation. You can either draw this from the ele electronic configuration that we've been looking at, or if you just have the basic electronic configuration, then you're just trying to fill the electrons in order. Here we have two electrons in the first shell. These are both going to go into the 1s and they will go spin up and spin down. In the next shell, we have eight electrons. We start from the 2s and we need to fill that first. So we have two electrons going in there. We have eight in total, so we've still got six to fill. The next three will fill singly and then they'll pair up. So we've got eight in total. In the third shell, we have seven. We start with the 3s and we fill that up. We've still got five electrons to go. So we fill these in singly into the 3p and then we pair up so that we have two pairs and a single. Pause the video now and try to draw those out as orbital box notation. Potassium's electron arrangement was 2, 8, 8, 1. In the first box, we have our two electrons for the 1s orbital. In the 2s orbital and the 2p orbitals, we have eight electrons in total. Moving now to the third shell, We have two electrons in the 3s, followed by six electrons in the 3p, and then finally one electron in the 4s. Carbon has an electron arrangement of 2, 4. The first box holds the two electrons. The 2s has a maximum of two electrons, leaving two more electrons, which will fill singly with spins parallel. Sulfur is 2, 8. Six. The first box has two electrons which are paired. We then have another two which are paired, followed by another six electrons in the 2p. In the 3s orbital, we can hold two electrons. We've now got four electrons which need to go into the 3p orbital. They will do this as three single electrons with parallel spins first before pairing. Vanadium has an electron arrangement of 2, 8, 11, 2. The electrons will fill two electrons into the 1s. We have two electrons in the 2s and six electrons in the 2p. In the 3s we have two electrons and then we can fill six electrons into the 3p. This has filled up eight of our 11 electrons. Three more electrons need to go into the 3d and they will do so singly with spins parallel. The 4s will have two electrons paired.
nitrogen ion has an electron arrangement of 2, 8. We have two electrons in the first cell, two electrons in the 2s, and six electrons in the 2p. We're now going to look at identifying quantum numbers. If we look at the 1s orbital here, we have an n equals 1, l equals 0, ml also equals 0 because there's only one s orbital, and then the ms will have one electron which is plus a half and one electron which is minus a half. We have almost the same set of quantum numbers for the next one, except we're in the n equals 2 shell. We're still in the n equals 2 shell for the 2p, but now we're at l equals 1. Our ml can also take different values now. We can have plus 1, 0, or minus 1. And our ms is still plus a half or minus a half. The 3s has n equals 3, l equals 0, ml also equals 0, and then ms being plus a half and minus a half. For our last one, we have n equals 3, l equals 1, ml can be plus 1, 0, minus 1, and then ms can be plus a half or minus a half. So as you can see, electrons can have three of the same quantum numbers, but one of them must be different, and this can happen in different ways. Pause the video now and for each section, write out the possible quantum numbers. Before we start filling in numbers, we need to remember that the L value can go from zero to N minus one. The M value can go from minus L to plus L. For the first one, we have an n equals 1, l equals 0, ml equals 0, and ms can be plus a half or minus a half. For the next one, we have n equals 2, l equals 0, ml equals 0, and then spin plus a half or minus a half. We're still in the second shell for the p, except now our l equals 1 which means that our ml is minus 1, 0, and plus 1, one for each of the p orbitals. Within those orbitals, we can have plus a half and minus a half for our electron spin. Moving up now to the third shell, and we start off with the s, which is the 0 for the l and 0 for the ml, and then the same spins. We're still in the third shell for the 3p, but now we have L equals 1. We have three options for the p orbitals. And we can have plus a half and minus a half for spin. The 4s fills next, which is in the fourth shell. It's a 0 for an s. And our spin is plus a half or minus a half. We're back to the third shell for the 3d, which is L equals 2. And we have five options for a d orbital and two options for spin. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe if you've not already and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.